with you. Jesus went out into the hills to pray, and he spent the whole night in prayer to God. When the day came, he summoned his disciples and picked out twelve of them. He called them apostles, Simon, whom he called Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon, called the Zealot, Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. He then came down with them and stopped at a piece of level ground where there was a large gathering of his disciples with a great crowd of people from all parts of Judea and from Jerusalem and from the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him and to be cured of their diseases. People tormented by unclean spirits were also cured and everyone in the crowd was trying to touch him because power came out of him that cured them all. The Gospel of the Lord. It is really wonderful that we could begin today's celebration of prayer through the intercession of our Blessed Mother by recalling the blessing of the Apostles that are the foundation stones on which the Church is built. And I really love the fact that there is a very positive message in today's liturgy, in today's readings. Because St. Paul, when he addresses the community in Ephesus, he encourages them. He recognizes that they struggle. He recognizes that even though they follow the same God, they follow Christ, and they have Our Lady, as God's mother on their side, they still feel alien. They still don't feel that they belong. And that's why today we hear St. Paul saying, you are no longer aliens or foreign visitors. You are citizens like all the saints and part of God's household. Now, when St. Paul speaks about being foreign visitor or being an alien, he's not asking us to show him a passport. He's not saying Brexit in or out. He's not interested in any of that. Because for St. Paul, the identity of citizenship is the grace of baptism. That's the pap passport, if you like, that joined us into one family, one family of God, one family of the Church. And baptism does not discriminate by color, by sex, by nationality, Baptism makes us one. Baptism makes us all citizens of heaven, as we heard through the words of St. Paul today. You are citizens like all the saints. So what he recognizes is that beautiful, three-dimensional aspect of the church, the church here on earth, the saints in heaven, 
and the holy souls in purgatory. And today, through this celebration, we unite them three dimensions during the celebration of the Holy Mass. We gather here as the Church on earth, we ask for the citizens of heaven, the saints, the apostles, Our Lady, to be with us today and to help us with our prayers, to help those who need our prayers, especially those that we call the holy souls, that may have nobody else to pray but us. So we unite ourselves in this beautiful prayer. And we recognize that there isn't a better person to show us how to pray, that there isn't a better person to show us how to be a person of faith and how to stand firm when the challenges, difficulties and painful experiences in our life come. But Our Lady, she is the image of the Church at prayer. She is the image of the Church that intercedes. She is the image of the Church that looks after all her children. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the celebration, we are just at the time when everybody remembers that 50 years ago the Abortion Act was, was accepted. And ever since, thousands and millions innocent children had never seen daylight. So many mothers live now in regret. So today we recognize that our mother that helps, accompanies, intercedes and looks after us all, she will look after all the children that should have been part of our society but had never had the chance to see the day. We pray for them that they may receive the grace of heaven. We pray for all the many mothers and fathers who had partaken in that awful act of cancelling the life of a child that their sins may be forgiven, so that they could be reconciled with the Lord and be able to carry in their hearts peace, the peace that we all deserve to have. And we pray today, especially through the intercession of Our Lady, especially as she is presented and revealed herself to to us in the image in Mexico as Our Lady of Guadalupe, as a pregnant mother, the one that carries within herself the seed of God, the one that is the patroness of all pregnant mothers. So we pray for them. We pray for all mothers that are expecting a child, those that know about it and are happy to accept it, those that know about it and struggle with the decision, and those that not yet know that they carry in themselves new life, so that when that news is broken to them, they will be able to accept that gift of life which comes from God. So today we embrace all these realities, remembering that this is the reality of the Church, the Church that is made of saints and sinners, and that we are called to help each other on that journey to heaven, not by condemning anybody, not by pointing fingers when others are going wrong, but by, but by praying for each other, 
praying that we all may be open to do God's will, that the love that Our Lady has for us may really deeply come into our hearts and give us love to the Lord and give us the life for everybody because everybody is loved, everybody is valued, everybody can and deserves to be a citizen of heaven. So I don't know if you find yourself today feeling that you may be in a foreign land, that you may be a foreign visitor. Well, believe that you are welcome. You are welcome because of your baptism. We are all one. We are all Christians. We are all on the journey to heaven. And that journey can happen in every land on this planet and can start everywhere. But the most important thing is that we are ready and willing to look at the signposts that the Church gives us through the saints, through the magisterium, through the Holy Father, and through the wisdom and the intercession of our Blessed Mother. So may this day be a day consecrated to her. May it be a day that helps our parish to be rededicated and reconsecrated to her Immaculate Heart. But with that parish, may all our families, may all our lives be given to Our Lady, so that we, like her, even when challenges and difficulties come, could stand firm and embrace the love that God has in store for us.